All right, so you're scouring the internet trying to figure out how to officiate a wedding. Well, look no further. This is where you're going to find out. I'm Mark Allen Grolo. I'm a full-time, book-solid, professional wedding officiant here in Toronto, Canada. I have been in the exact same place as you are right now, and now I help people officiate fantastic weddings. So here we go. Are you ready? Here is how to write the perfect 10-part wedding ceremony. Let's get into it. Number one, the ceremony kickoff. Got to start this thing off somehow. And here is how I typically do it. So first of all, I walk to the front. There's no change to the music. I walk in a lot of the time with the groom, with the groom's party, and then I make a few announcements. First, I welcome everybody to the wedding, get them warmed up a little bit. I tell them two things. First of all, whether or not they're allowed to take photos. And second, I tell them to please turn off their devices so that nothing is ringing or going off. Might make a little joke with the groomsmen or the groom to make sure they have their phones turned off too. Then I just say, we're gonna have a wonderful time. With that, let's begin. And that brings us to number two, two of 10, the processional. So when I say with that, let's begin, the music starts. And this is when people come marching rather ceremonially down the aisle. So the typical traditional order to this is that the bridesmaids walk out leading up to the maid of honor and then, of course, to the bride. Now, there might be ring bearers and juniors, bridesmaids and things like that. Again, sometimes they come out before the bridesmaids. Sometimes they come out after the maid of honor and before the bride. Bride comes down with dad or whoever is walking her down. She arrives at the front. The groom steps forward. Usually they stop at the front row. Groom steps forward, takes her hand, of course, handshakes with dad or whoever's walking her, hugs, kisses, exchange. They step forward. They stand in front of me, you, the officiant. I like to have them hold hands. The bride will often turn, uh, give her flowers to her maid of honor. And then we are ready to begin and move into number three. Element number three for writing the perfect wedding ceremony is the officiant's speech. That's where you and I say a bunch of things. Now here's what I recommend. You can do a whole bunch of things. You can say a whole bunch of things. We've all been to weddings where, uh, you know, it's not the most exciting. I think what makes a wedding so important and amazing is that we're all here to witness the commitment and the promise that these two people are making in front of us, basically in community. And so I like to talk about that. Here's a few things you can say. You can share a story of the couple or the story of the couple. I tell the story of the couple in every single wedding I tell. Another thing you might do is read some uh, readings, some poems, some things that are meaningful to them. Something, of course, about love, marriage, that kind of thing. So if you are going to focus on some theme, I would say make some kind of deep philosophical statement about commitment and the meaning of faithfulness. And of course, here, if you're presiding over a religious, a more religious ceremony, as I do sometimes, you might want to include a blessing, a prayer, or something from this couple's faith or religious tradition. Number four is the exchange of vows. I like to say this is the heart of the ceremony. This is the part of the day when these two people are going to make promises to each other that we, of course, traditionally call vows. They're essentially promises never to leave each other. Now, there's typically three ways to do vows. The couple can write and read their own vows. The couple can repeat after we officiants, line by line by line, or they can just stand there, option number three, while we read a big long question at them and they just say, I do, in turn. Which leads us next to number five. Number five is, of course, the exchange of rings. So again, in the ceremony, I like to say these rings are a physical symbol of the promises that these two have just made to each other. Usually the best man has both rings, and so each will take a turn putting them on, starting with the groom. They'll usually repeat a couple of words. I like to have them say a couple things about, I give you this ring as a sign of my commitment. When they've each done that and the rings are on, then we move on to the next element, number six. So after I've said a few things, I like to tell the story. After the vows have been made, after the rings have been exchanged, I typically say, with nothing left to be said, and by the authority given me by the province, you might want to say that. You may have to say some words there, depending on your legal jurisdiction. I now pronounce you husband and wife or married. You may kiss the bride. You may kiss the groom. You may kiss each other. I talk to the couple about what they want me to say there, and they kiss. Everybody cheers. And that leads us into the next element. Element number seven is signing the legal documents. 
Now, I don't know what this process is like where you are here in Ontario, where I am. We need to go to a signing table with two witnesses. So five of us basically go there. We sit down. Usually there's a fun song playing because after they've kissed and everybody's cheered, uh, it's a bit of a party mood. So number seven, we sign. We take our time doing that. Usually lots of pictures. Guests are chatting. Then we come back to the center and that leads to step number eight. Number eight is the closing remark. So at this time, I'll say something like the couple sign the papers. They're totally legit and married and people cheer. Uh, a lot of the time I'll tell them now, I'll tell them a couple things. I'll tell them what the couple is doing next, like bride and groom are heading out briefly for photos, just so that the guests aren't wondering, where are they, where did they go? So they're gone for a little while. In the meantime, this is the second thing I tell them. In the meantime, you are invited to the terrace. Cocktail hour has begun. Enjoy drinks and hors d'oeuvres and the reception will follow after that. Again, I asked the couple exactly what they would like me to say there. And so, with that said, I say thanks everyone for coming, have a wonderful evening, and now, and this leads into step number nine. Step number nine is the official presentation of the couple. Here is where the couple gets officially presented to everyone for the first time, and so I will say something like, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. last name, or just first names as husband and wife, or something like that. Again, talk to the couple about how they want to be presented for the first time. But there you go, that leads into the last step. We made it, number 10, the recessional. The recessional is nice and quick. A couple of points here though. The couple head immediately down the aisle. And so I always tell the wedding parties, let's wait until they get all the way down the aisle because we don't want some kind of crowding. We don't want a traffic jam backed up. So we let the couple do go all the way down the aisle. Maybe they're gonna kiss, maybe they're gonna mug from the camera, maybe they're gonna be high-fiving guests, whatever, let them go. But then once the aisle is clear, Typically, best man, maid of honor, two by two, and then after that, in pairs, the, the gentleman will step forward, offer their arm, the lady will take it, and they will go. This is pretty quick. It's not like the processional where it's nice and slow. The recessional is fast. We got somewhere to go. Pictures to take, drinks to have, a party to get to, that kind of thing. The music is playing. It's a party atmosphere. And then, of course, I step over to the bride's parents, congratulate them, let them go down the aisle. The groom's parents, same thing, and off and off we recess. We're done. That's the 10 part wedding ceremony. Now, of course, there are a million ways to do weddings. There's variations on this. So this is not uh, me saying this is the definitive ceremony. However, I will say I've been doing this for years here in Toronto, a big urban center with millennial couples. People love this, this works. So this might not fit you exactly, adapt it, use it, but this works, I can tell you that. Now, if you have questions like, yeah, but what about all those little variations and details as I was talking? What about this? What about that? I have a full major blog post on this. Please click the link down below and you'll get a lot of variations. I also have a ceremony guide for free that you can grab. The link is down below, so grab that as well. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you want every week to be notified about a new video. Every week I'm putting up a new video about how to officiate a wedding. Thanks a lot. See you next time.